I think you should go without saying, guys, that I've talked about Sailor Moon more than once or twice on my channel already. And for most people, this will somewhat be a similar breakdown. But it's about time that I actually do make a Sailor Moon video discussing how strong Sailor Moon actually is. For all the people that really just don't care about the people that I put her up against to actually just see how strong Sailor Moon is. For all of you who actually have a pretty good idea of how strong Sailor Moon is, well, I'm pretty sure in this video you will be pretty shocked by what I eventually crown her as. Ultimately, I want to apologize for the lack of videos for the last couple of days, as I've just personally been sitting on certain videos and just not uploaded them. Honestly, for the next three to four days, similar to how it was before, you should be seeing uploads immediately after this one drops. I am sorry about that, and I apologize. With that being said, I do want to also say this. This video will be very semi in terms of length and will not be that long. Thank you, as always, guys, and I hope you enjoy the video. And if you do, please be sure to hit that red subscribe button if you like Sailor Moon and want to see other content. Now, with that being said, let's get into this video right now. Usagi Tuskino, Usagi Tuskino, is a reincarnation of the ancient princess of the sailor, of the solar system, Princess Serenity, and in the modern era is Sailor Moon, leader of the Sailor Senshu, the guardians of the solar system. She is the bearer of the silver crystal, the ultimate force of creation in the cosmos, and battles the incarnation of chaos, the ultimate evil, who wish to claim the silver crystal to destroy the entire cosmos. She goes on to defeat chaos itself and become the ruler of the entire solar system, Neo Queen Serenity. Own so hearing in an era of peace and immortality for all its people. That is crazy, as I've said multiple times before. Because honestly, let's be real here, I'm not changing much. Looking at Usagi, this is the big difference between all my other videos and this one right here. I'm not going to be skipping any powers and abilities, and we'll be discussing everything about Usagi. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Let's continue. Looking at her powers and abilities, Usagi has the power of being blessed. Let me explain what this is. Father. Sailor Senshu are the avatars of the gods and chosen by fate. They are born under the protection of the gods and their guardian planets, giving them their abilities and inherit resistance to numerous abilities. The dreams of the Sailor Senshu often predict the future. This seemed to happen to Usagi before transforming for the first time. Let's not forget that she also has resurrection and immortality possibly not combat equitable though so long as their sailor crystals exist sailor Senshu will reincarnate the temporary lives of each incarnation are treated as temporary disguise for the Senshu's eternal life across reincarnation possibly minor and with that being said obviously she has superhuman physical characteristics clearly as you know that's how it is sailor Senshu are women born of incredible strength and beauty usagi's beauty and love can cause enemies to act subtly in attempting to fight her. Demond, a warlord, madman, fell in love with Neo Queen Serenity with one sight and spent the rest of the arc attempting to capture her instead of kill her. Galaxia, a genocidal dictator who was enraptured by Usagi's love that she willing gave up and allowed herself to die. Chaos, the conceptual void before existence, wanted to fuel Usagi instead of killing her. She also possesses things like auto teleportation and shield. While she is unaware of it initially, Usagi is the bearer of the Silver Crystal, which will act independently of her to teleport her away from danger, grow into a barrier to protect her, or exclude energy to form a barrier around her. Also, she possibly has resistance to aid manipulation because Sailor Crystals can control aging of the Sailor Shinshu, keeping them from aging when not ready or rapidly aging them to face an imminent threat. And let's not forget things like energy protection and light manipulation also so transformation there's a transformation in the sense can freely transform between her civilian and sailor Shinshu forms at will with henshin and the light and energy manipulation goes as far as henshin gives off a blinding light and destructive energy it can fire the destructive beam of light by reflecting moonlight using moon twilight flash then we have things like teleportation and interdimensional travel Sailor Senshu can use their Henshin ability to teleport between dimensions. BFR, Sailor Senshu can teleport others with them through dimensions. Shape shifting, obviously, Sailor Moon has a disguised Henshin, which allows her to change her appearance into anyone, regardless of age, personality, class, or occupation. 
When we look further, we have things like sound manipulation and status effect inducement. Sailor Moon's crying is amplified by her hair uh, pieces to form ultrasonic sound waves, which cause enemies to go limp. Spicel destruction. Sailor Moon's ultrasonic waves can destabilize and threaten an alternate dimension. Enchantment. Sailor V was able to imbue ordinary objects with magic power. Sailor Moon may be capable of the same. Now that's just a that's just a stretch, to be completely honest. Transmutation. Sailor Moon's TR can transmute things to dust. And obviously things like weapon mastery, emotional manipulation, and mind control. Sailor Shinshun have regularly resisted mind manipulation that allows for brainwashing people to act how the user wants and manipulate their emotions, of course. We also have things like black holes, gravity, and radiation. Usagi can walk around unaided in her civilian state on Nemesis, which is described as being a black hole with massive radiation emitting from it, which is a very crazy thing to think about. We have things like power bestowal. Sailor Moon telepathically spoke to the Guardian Sension and gave them a greater level of power. Channeling because Sailor Moon can channel the spirit of her future self. Like, what, what are we talking about right now? What are these powers? Like, seriously, like, I bet I'm blowing away, like, most of your minds right now. For all the people that are just like, wow, I can't believe half of the stuff I'm hearing. Higher dimensional manipulation because could destroy the galaxy Cladron, which transcends the Sailor Moon cosmos, which contains numerous higher dimensions. Okay, I, that's that's even more crazy, I'm pretty sure, for most of you. Like, I know I'm just sounds like half of this stuff is unbelievable. But yeah, and here's just a couple other things I just wrote down that I was able to find. And yeah, I'm just going to say them all. So yeah, just bear with me right here. We have explosion manipulation, extensory perception, fire manipulation, um, fragrance manipulation, genius intelligence, uh, ice manipulation. That's more for Neo Queen Serenity on the genius intelligence level. Illusion creation, emergence intelligibility, memory manipulation, mind control, mind reading, mismanipulation, pain manipulation, paralysis inducement, plant manipulation, perception manipulation. Uh, soul from manipulation, text manipulation, time stop, and water manipulation. All right, now with all that out of the way, we can now get into the much more in depth stuff, which I like to talk about, which will be going through all of the speeds for Osagi throughout her time and all of her attack potency throughout her time. So let's get into this right now. At least average human level at the beginning of the series, this is because Usagi starts the series as a normal human, obviously. Then we can jump her to possibly wall level. Sailor Moon vs. Normal Humans have superhuman feats such as Amano, a physically weak nerd, surviving being near a large explosion. Back during the Silver Millennium, humans were able to wage war against the people of the moon, who could colonize the surface of the other planets of the solar system unshielding like Venus, taking their atmospheres. Likely large planet level, I know that sounds crazy, but yeah, we get there really quick because their weakest attack could accidentally threaten JDI's dimension, which appeared to contain its own orbiting moon within it. The distance between a planet and its moon would be larger than a gas giant, and the moon that appears during Sailor Moon's speech was previously shown to the real moon and not a visual effect. She is also likely stronger than the parallel Sinshin who stopped a planetary threat. Lower star level, because the silver crystal's energy cannot be freely used by anything but the true uh, here, um, nothing less had the power if it fell into the wrong hands to casually blow apart a star. Serenity, as the true hair, should be able to use a greater power from it, even at her inexperience, consistent with her being mistaken for an exploding supernova. Now we can look at even further and say that Sailor Moon jumps to solar system level. Now, like I've already told people millions of times when watching Sailor Moon, these things happen very gradually quickly as she gets upgrades and these things can be highly overlooked, but that's why I'm going in detail, so let's continue. By the end of the first arc, Sailor Moon has the same power she would have during the early second arc. Considering the degree of her power increases, she'd already likely be in the range regardless. Then we have things like saying maybe high universal level, even after this, because she was obviously stronger than the first arc Sailor Mercury, who created a 4D spatial bubble to prevent collateral damage, and had to use the full power of the Silver Crystal to fight Queen Materia, which is consistently called infinite, and if in the first arc alone. Then we can get back to that high universal scaling by saying stronger than her power during the Materia fight. Then we can just bring it back down to universal level where we can say Sailor Moon was bestowed a power by Neo Queen Serenity that warped space time, piercing even to the far reaches of space time. And it's relative to Black Lady whose birth created a chaos in space time greater than any before. Then we can say low, likely low multiverse level because Usagi's initial sentient 
into Super Sailor Moon released tens of thousands of times the powers of the Terion Crystal in its peak. While a Terion Crystal that is dying out has an infinite power similar to base Sailor Moons, by the end of the third arc, Sailor Moon had enough power to grant seven other Sailor Shinshu their super force before getting it, and even stronger super form in the fourth arc beyond any power she'd ever had. Likely relative to base Sailor Saturn, whose power was going to at least reduce the Tau dimension to silence and nothingness, and would have threatened the main dimension if Pluto had not sealed off the dimension, meaning she was threatening at least two dimensions, possibly far higher. Sailor Saturn is consistently stated to be a threat to everything, and during her appearance in the ancient past, she was she with a single motion killed all things, including Sailor. Uh, Moon Cosmos has numerous alternate dimensions and uh, parallel timelines through the exact amount is unknown. And where we get now is last but not least, Usagi's most impressive scaling. I'm going to actually cover her one more feat to back up the low multiversal level claims. Even at her weakest during the Stars arc, she should be stronger than she was during the Dream arc. Usagi in her civilian form tanked the power of Galaxias, uh, you know, tank the power of dream arc eternal sailor moon um and complex multiversal level is usagi's strongest form of attack potency we'll just cover this real quick eternal sailor moon's full power was stated by both galaxy and sailor cosmos to be able to destroy a galaxy clotteron the galaxy clotteron is a plane of reality that transcends the entire sailor moon cosmos and created all potentials within it the Sailor Moon Cosmos is noted to have numerous higher dimensions, including at least one additional spatial dimension, as well as statements that suggest numerous times dimensions, such as a statement of there being layers of time and being stated to contain depths of space time, where a time key is needed to detect in particular point of space as well as space time, um, a timeless rift transcending concepts of distance and direction. This would be likely a dimension transcending the four dimensions of space and three dimensions of time. We can further her complex multiversal level claims by this and this alone. After absorbing the Labadamo power, Usagi destroyed chaos with a single with, with a single burst, reducing it to infinitesimal small without intending to. That is crazy. She destroyed her most powerful opponent with a single burst. And that alone should tell you why Usagi pretty much one shots Goku. She destroyed a concept, a, a, a whole concept with one shot. And considering that I've already covered Goku versus Usagi, Usagi kind of just whacks most mainstream anime characters even till this day. But yeah, that's just crazy to think about that she's even that strong. When looking at Usagi's speed, which will be the wrap up for this video, we can just cover things that need to be covered. Like when she actually starts to get really fast. Likely massively FTL to massively FTL plus, even at weakest should be superior to Luna, who along with Artemis came to the soul system from another star system, should be superior to Phobes and Demos, who also flew to the soul system from another star system, superior to pre henshing Monaco, who accidentally sent herself to Venus in uh, seconds, possibly to superior, uh, I mean superior to the Waver stars, who travel dozens of light years every year. Now we get to Asagi's like where I'm going to say definite speed levels, which are immeasurable. And I'll cover like all the different like feats for why that is. So let's get into that right now. Should not be vastly slower than Zoe Sight, who reacted to and avoided reflected moonlight after it was fired. Light in Sailor Moon has been shown to transcend time on a number on a large number of instances. However, it is unknown if this property of all light or just the light of the silver crystal more immeasurable level scaling because she was superior to herself before then we can say even further the immeasurable levels of scaling superior to before because she defeated queen materia who along with the other incarnations of evil traveled across the space and time however first dark materia is weaker than prime materia and is unknown how she compares to herself at the point she traveled across space and time then we can say likely measurable further because superior to herself before is likely not infinitely slower than Black Lady. Then we can say to further it for the finest and final time. So this is like four lines I've given you for immeasurable speed for Southern Moon. It's not infinitely slower than Black Lady who quickly brought Demond and Sephir to the edge of space time. Should be relative to Death Phantom who is much weaker state traveled across space and time, ended up in the far future and reacted to Sailor Moon's light, transcending time and reaching the far reaches of space time. 
So with that being said, that's gonna give Sailor Moon immeasurable levels of speed. I think this is consistent because there's really four whole lines for it that I've literally given you. And I've literally given you multiple lines for her most power, which is complex multiverse level. With that being said, guys, Sailor Moon is a fantastic show and I recommend you all watching it. Sailor Moon is one of the strongest characters in fiction. Well, not necessarily fiction, but I will say mainstream anime for the most part. If you guys did enjoy this video, please be sure to hit a like, comment, share, subscribe. And yeah, I hope a lot of you guys were, you know, surprised. This is supposed to be educational, as these are all things that I think, you know, Sailor Moon actually are naturally. Now, there could be highballs, but like they were getting to stuff like maybe is Sailor Moon is outer verse level and maybe... Well, I think she would still be immeasurable. I don't think there's no way to highball her speed higher. I just think she just is immeasurable. I don't think there's any highballing there. I just don't think you get her higher than that in general. But yeah, if you guys did enjoy this video, hit the red subscribe button. Thank you. I'll never be able to say enough. I'll always have to say this because I'll never be able to say it enough. Thank you. And I hope you guys have a nice day. I'm gone. And uh, yeah, see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.